That is true. They won't give them straw anymore. Why did they decide so? Because Aaron and Moses asked the Pharaoh to let the Hebrews free. So, no straw anymore, and the Pharaoh wants the same amount of bricks. It's time for all of us to rise up. But Moses, we can't live this way anymore. They told us that we would be free and rich and that we would leave for the promised land. Instead, you made the Pharaoh angry with us, Aaron. What do you answer? If you speak this way, you don't belong to our people anymore. Your God is no longer Jehovah. Your God is the Pharaoh who holds our people prisoners and who ordered all our firstborn sons to be killed. I'm living the last days of my life, and I won't see what many of you who will survive will see. Don't let the Pharaoh's soldiers kill you. You must live, because the day will come when you'll be freed by the hand of the Lord. Go to your homes, call your wives, your daughters, and all those who have hands for labor. Go to the barns, to the fields, and to the shore of the Nile. Gather straw wherever you can find it. This way you'll live, and the day of salvation will come. The Hebrews, kept in slavery by the Egyptians for so many years, were forced to work night and day with no interruption, so they were exhausted and at the end of their strength. The daily amount of food they received was not enough to appease their hunger. The result of the hard work, of the deprivations and mistreatment, was that the number of surviving Hebrews reduced more and more. It was a very hard life, and the Hebrews grew increasingly desperate. Hey, you! So young and already stealing! The Pharaoh, irritated by Moses and Aaron's request, stopped providing the Hebrews with the straw they needed to make the bricks. They had to look for the straw by themselves. This search would increase their working hours, but they were still required to make the same amount of bricks. This work was extremely hard. They had to load, transport and pour a special mud into containers and then tread on that mud mixed with straw for hours to reduce it into a paste. Then they had to put that paste into wood mold and cook it in special kilns or let it dry under the sun until it hardened. It was exhausting work. My lord, why do you bring evil to these people? How could you doubt me? I am the Lord. I have heard the groaning of the children of Israel, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, I will deliver the children of Israel into the land I promised them. My Lord, but the Pharaoh will not obey you. I will strike him with my great might. I am the Lord. As for you, go back to the Pharaoh with Aaron and ask him to let the children of Israel leave his kingdom. After speaking to the Lord, Moses called for Aaron, and together with a delegation of elders, they went to the Pharaoh to ask him to let the Hebrews leave for three days to celebrate the Lord in the wilderness. Why do you divert people from work? Not only you fail producing what you had to, but you even want to stop your work to offer sacrifices to your God in the wilderness. You are mad. Leave and do what I ordered. Get out and work. You can't toll back the Hebrews any longer. Remember that you Hebrews are my slaves and that you must obey me, or else there will be trouble for you. Big trouble. Show him what our God is able to do. What a divine illusion! What magic is this? What is this sorcery all about? What are you trying to do? 
Do something, you magicians. Get rid of that snake immediately. Powerful Amon, invisible creator of things. Ah, triumphant son of the meat day. Thrice powerful god Throth, heart of Ra. Now, devour it, devour it, now. Go and tell your people that they must obey me. I will always need their hands. I do not care if your magic is more powerful than that of my magicians. It is only magic. Time went relentlessly by, and the pharaoh still insisted that his Hebrew slaves must work and could not leave Egypt. His heart was hard, and he did not want to understand the reasons why he should let them go. Then the Lord called for Moses again and told him, The Pharaoh is obstinate and refuses to let my people go. Go to him tomorrow morning and tell him he must let the Hebrews leave Egypt, as I need them in the wilderness. Why did the snake of Moses eat yours? How come you magicians could not stop it? You have greatly disappointed me. We were just talking about them, and here they are now. As for you two, I have to say that you are very stubborn. Absolutely stubborn. Since when and how long have your people been our guests in the land of Egypt? Hmm? How long? For more than 100 years, Pharaoh. 100 years. And I tell you that they will spend many more years in this land. Hundreds of years. Now, have your say and then go and leave me in peace. These are the orders of the God of Israel. Let my people go so they may serve me in the wilderness. If you don't, the Almighty will punish you severely. And how? I'd definitely like to know how he'll do something like that. You'll see. You'll see right away. What's happening? What have you done? What have you done? Uh, it's blood! It's all blood! Uh, oh. Uh. What have you done? How did you do this? How did you do it? Who taught you this? All the fish living in the River Nile died and came to the surface as the waters of the river had been polluted by blood. From every water source of Egypt, blood gushed out. The Egyptians desperately dug the earth in search of water, but they could not find a single drop. Water, Mother, thirsty. You have performed more wizardry. You are wizards. It is not your god who sends his prophets. You are magicians. Chase them out. After Moses dipped the staff of the Lord into the river Nile, it took seven whole days for things to return to normal. But the heart of the Pharaoh wasn't yet touched by those fatal warnings. So the Lord called for Moses again and told him, if the Pharaoh still refuses to let you leave for the land I promised you, I'll hit the entire extent of his reign with the scourge of the frogs. What do you want? Why did you come here on the banks of the Nile? The Pharaoh said no to the people of Israel, again. And you, what do you want? What are you intending to do? What are you after? they do this wizardry? This is powerful magic! The River Nile swarmed with frogs that invaded everywhere and jumped everywhere. On people, on boats, meadows, fields, they went into people's houses and jumped on women, children, old people and on animals. They were everywhere. Then the Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron, 
and begged them to send the frogs back into the river again. And then he would permit the Hebrews to leave Egypt the day after. The Lord satisfied the request of the Pharaoh and the plague of the frogs ceased. Men gathered the frogs into heaps and burned them in the public squares. When the pharaoh saw that everything had returned to normal, he forgot what he had promised and did not keep his word. Damned imbeciles, don't you understand? It's the swamps around the Nile that have caused this, not the god you fear. Don't you understand? Get out, go away. What did the Pharaoh say to you? He said no again, and he won't listen to reason. He is still stubbornly challenging the Almighty. What are we going to do? To leave? We'll have to wait for the Pharaoh to make up his mind. I don't think he ever will. His heart is made of stone. Then Moses took his staff and placed it in the earth. A huge cloud of dust appeared and transformed into an enormous swarm of mosquitoes that swarmed on the people and animals. Then the mosquitoes changed into a vast quantity of venomous flies, deadly because of their mortal poison. And they invaded everywhere. Huge swarms of venomous flies got into the Egyptians' houses, into the pharaoh's palace, into the stables, and they swarmed on the livestock. It's incredible we can't do anything. We're powerless against venomous flies. The storm comes, strikes, and disperses. It's always been this way. All we have to do is wait for it to be over. You morons, you are incompetent. What kind of magicians are you? You are incapable of doing anything. Egypt was devastated by the venomous flies. Only the land of Goshen was safe from this plague. The Pharaoh sent his messengers to ask for Moses and Aaron again, and they came to his palace and waited. He had finally made a decision, but before announcing it, he wanted to see how Moses and Aaron would react. So he told them, I summoned you because I have finally understood. You are two powerful magicians, very powerful. How much money do you want to work for me? No, we're not magicians. Surrender to our God. No, I will never surrender to the God of the Hebrews, and he will never subdue me. Our God wants you to free the Hebrews. That will never happen. Tell your gods that I will never set them free. Understand, never. The Almighty will see to it that you're convinced, Pharaoh. <laughs> you can go now, Pharaoh, but remember that your troubles are not over. Egypt, you are almighty. I thank you for what you say, my queen. As the Pharaoh's attitude towards the Hebrews did not change, the Lord told Moses, Stretch your hand to heaven, and in the land of Egypt will be such a thick darkness that you'll be able to touch it. Moses stretched his hand to heaven, and for three days a thick and dense darkness wrapped around the entire land of Egypt. Nobody could move from the place they were, but even this warning did not convince the Pharaoh, and so once more the Lord spoke to Moses. Stretch your hand to heaven so that fire and hail will fall on all of Egypt. A rain of fire and hail fell from heaven and crashed with violence to the earth. And the hail was so strong that as it struck the land, it caused damage to people, animals, and crops. Only the land of Goshen, where the Hebrews lived, was safe from this plague. The fire burned everything in its path. Stables, trees were reduced into smoking ashes. 
and all around were burnt carcasses. Your God is against us. Ask your God to save me from this disaster, and I promise you that I will let you out of Egypt. And the Lord said, So says the Lord, the God of Hebrews, let my people go so that they can serve me. And if you refuse to do that, tomorrow I'll let fall on your land an enormous swarm of locusts. They will fill your houses and those of all Egyptians. Look, look how many locusts. They'll destroy everything. Because of their enormous quantity, the locusts will form a deadly carpet. And there'll be so many to cover completely the soil of Egypt. They will devour everything they meet. Plants, trees, animals, an enormous destructive cloud that will destroy everything it meets. I have to do this because you don't want to let my people leave Egypt. And tomorrow my hand will fall again upon your livestock in the fields, upon horses, donkeys, camels, oxen, and sheep. The day after, the Pharaoh sent his faithful attendants to check whether what the Lord had said was true. And they told him that not even one animal of the Egyptian livestock had survived, while the livestock of the Israelis was safe and sound. Why did you call for us, Pharaoh? Maybe to tell us that we can finally leave Egypt? Stop, Moses. I am no more against you. But now ask your God to save me from this ruin. I have no livestock left. I will ask him, but you will let us leave so that we may serve our God. Yes, I will permit you that. But now ask your God to keep away this mortal plague from me and Egypt. So Moses lifted up his staff. Immediately, a strong wind blew up. It was a powerful west wind that dragged all the locusts into its vortex. It was an incredible show. The wind blew noisily, and its gusts mixed up with the chirruping of the insects. From the balcony of his palace, the astonished pharaoh and his court watched as the locusts plunged into the Red Sea. In a short time, through the entire land of Egypt, not even one trace of a locust had been left. Moses and Aaron left the palace, hoping that the pharaoh would now keep his word. But... Pharaoh, my lord, do you really intend to let them get out of Egypt? No, Egypt can absolutely not survive without the labor of the Hebrews. No. Lord, Lord, where are you? Hear your servant, I beg you. I am here. Moses, I listen to you. Talk. What do you want to tell me? Lord, you know that the Pharaoh still said no. After promising to let us go, why did you harden his heart? Moses, I hardened his heart so that he knows perdition. If the Pharaoh does not want to let us go, what do I do now, my lord? You only have to trust me. You'll see the day will come that the Pharaoh repents for holding back the Hebrews against my will. Why didn't you let them go, my lord? You can't defeat a god. You can't. If you don't obey him, you'll destroy your own kingdom. Yes, you are right, but I absolutely cannot permit them to leave. Hmm, I see that you are ready and about to leave for the land promised by your god. I did warn you, Pharaoh, that we had to leave. Go and serve your lord. Your children may also go with you, but you will leave your livestock here. No, Pharaoh, no. Our livestock will come with us. Not even a hoof will remain here because we need them to make sacrifices to the lord. You are asking too much. Leave and do not dare reappear before me, otherwise you will die. That's right, Pharaoh. You will never see our faces again. The sun will return to your kingdom, but when the powerful hand of God strikes you again, you'll be crushed. <laughs> The Pharaoh could not resign himself to the departure of the Hebrews from Egypt, and he recalled the ten plagues the Lord had sent him as warnings. The thick, sudden darkness that fell and that lasted three days and three nights. The rain of fire that burned everything in its path. The staff of Moses that became a huge snake that ate the three snakes the magicians conjured to fight it. 
the day in which all of Egypt's water turned to blood, polluting every spring and pool and killing all the fish in the River Nile so they floated to the surface. The day in which a huge plague of frogs hopped from the River Nile and jumped on the earth, invading all of Egypt's fields and houses. The enormous swarm of mosquitoes that buzzed hungrily on people and animals. The plague of venomous flies that swarmed into the Egyptians' houses, the pharaoh's palace and animal stables, bringing with them death and destruction. He recalled the rain of fire and hail that destroyed the crops and the houses, that burned the trees and the countryside, and left a trail of scorched bodies, animal and human, in its path. The enormous hungry swarm of locusts that rapidly destroyed and devoured everything in its path. Only Moses' intervention had saved Egypt from the insects. You are asking too much. Leave, and do not dare reappear before me, otherwise you will die. The Pharaoh mistreated me just as he mistreats the rest of your people. My Lord, will you help me to deliver them from his hands? I am your God. I am that I am. With me by your side, you won't fear anything. May you be blessed, my Lord. May you always be blessed. <laughs> 